Okay, so we're going to talk about domains of circular functions, which are really things that we've, we've talked about in other videos. But I want to show you how the unit circle um, can make finding domains of certain functions easier, really. So sine and cosine. So I, I've talked about in other videos the domains of these functions, but I want to talk about now a, a view, new way to view this. So if I just think about the x and y values, because that, that's how we think of the unit circle, right? The x and y values relate to sine and cosine. So check it out. Here's my x values. They go from lowest is negative 1, the highest is 1. And the same can be said for the y values, right? So here's the lowest y value. Here's the highest y value. So I can say that you know the x and y values are between negative 1 and 1. And then I know that x and y are equal to cosine and sine. So boom, I've just discovered my domains. So this is an alternative way to prove what the domains are just using this, the unit circle. And it's so much easier when you have the unit circle. Um, you might remember some of the conversations we've had earlier about how to find these domains. So just it, it's just much faster. <laughs> OK, so let's talk about tangent and secant. So what I want to remind you um, so tangent and secant, there's a couple different ways you can think about these, right? So you can think about this as y over x or 1 over x, or you can define these functions in terms of other trig functions, so tangent sine over cosine, so using the quotient identity or using um, the fact that secant is the reciprocal of, of cosine. All these different ways that you can think about this. So no matter what, notice that we have fractions here, right? These are fractions. The thing you have to worry about with a fraction is getting a zero in the denominator. So we have to worry about where x, i.e. cosine, where does that equal zero? Well, I've got my unit circle. It's actually very easy to determine this with the unit circle. So I get x equals zero here. So that's at pi over 2. And here's another zero. Here's where x equals zero. So that's 3 pi over 2. So I've used the unit circle to help me determine this. Now I could also reverse the direction of this. We've talked about this in, in other videos. If I go this way instead, this would be negative pi over 2, and this would be negative 3 pi over 2 if I go this direction as opposed to this direction. So OK, anyways, so to avoid what, what we really need, if we, if we want to get to the domain of either tangent or secant, we, we need to avoid a 0 in the denominator. And we've just seen that this ha happens at what we'll call odd multiples of pi over 2. Odd multiples of pi over 2 would be like pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or negative 3 pi over 2 and so on and so forth. So this is how we want to think of our domain now, which is a little bit simpler with the unit circle. So now another way we can rewrite the domain for these functions is just that the value of s cannot equal 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, and n is an integer. Now you might be asking, what is this 2n plus 1? 2n plus 1, this is a way to um, write out odd multiples. So think about it. If I plug in n equals 0, I just get 1. So that'll give me pi over 2. If I plugged in n equals 1, this becomes 2 plus 1. So this would be 3. So this would be 3 pi over 2. So this is just a way to ensure that we have an odd number times pi over 2. So th this is just how we write that out. OK, and lastly, I just want to talk about how do you figure out the domains using the unit circle for cotangent and cosecant. So very similar reasoning. So cotangent and cosecant, so this would be x over y, 1 over y. Or you could think of it equivalently as cosine of theta over sine of theta and 1 over sine of theta. So it's the same idea, right? We, we can't have a 0 in the denominator. So now we have to concern ourselves with where we get y equal to 0. And I can see where y equals 0. So here's where y equals 0. If I go around the circle, at pi, we have y equals 0. If I continue to go around the circle, this would be 2 pi. If I continue this way, this would be 3 pi. So going this direction, anytime you hit um, pi, you're going to get y equals 0. So it makes it, again, much simpler to determine. So we still just want to avoid 0 in the denominator, pi, negative pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. So the way that we would write out the domain in this case is that just s cannot equal n times pi, where n can be any integer. And so the unit circle can just make figuring out certain things about trig functions. It makes it a lot simpler. It's, it's not such deep arguments that we have to make. We can really just rely on using that illustration to help us figure some of these things out in another kind of simpler way. 
And, and that's it for this video. So just a really quick explanation of how to use the unit circle to determine your domains of your trig functions.